So it's been a minute since I've done a video. Um, just a lot of things have popped up in life that's kind of slowed my video stuff. I'm hoping all that's out of the way now and I can get back to a, about a monthly schedule on videos. Um, but this video will be about speaker version 8 here. Um, I did get a new microphone, so hopefully the audio in this video is better. Please let me know in the comments down below if there's anything I can do to the audio to make it better. I'm hoping this is a step in the right direction. So yeah, we'll get into the speaker build and then come back and kind of talk about the design differences. As you've seen in the build process, this speaker kind of went together a little different than the previous speakers, if you've watched the previous videos. If not, um, I do recommend checking them out. Uh, this has been a quite a little journey for me, and I think I've really improved on speaker design. Um, but on this one, one of the major differences is the magnet size. So I went from these tiny little neodymium magnets that I was getting off Amazon for whatever bargain price I could find to an actual N52 high power neodymium magnet. Um, so not only is the size bigger, but I believe these were only like an N30-ish magnet, and this is an N52, so it's a much higher magnetic field density, if I understand how they're rating those correctly. Another major design that you may have noticed in this speaker is it's more of a modular design. So the actual magnet assembly will come off and then that'll allow that spacer ring to come out and then the spider just kind of is held in there by compression forces. 
and then the uh, top plate here will undo and then you can actually remove the spider coil and cone assembly out and then I can do any kind of changes I need to do to the coil system. I can change the cone weight, the cone type, uh, different surround materials, all while utilizing the same frame and same motor. I can also adapt this motor to other models that I may design in the future. So moving forward, I think all of my speakers will be more of a modular type speaker as it just gives more flexibility to reuse parts as I'm starting to get into some more expensive parts for like the magnet like these were significantly way more expensive than those as these magnets were close to a dollar a piece and I think I was getting a pack of a hundred of those for like four or five dollars so I can't just glue the magnets and speakers anymore and throw them on the shelf when I'm done I need to actually be able to utilize and remove the magnets and that's another reason I went with the um, removable like magnet case covers that were just set M12 set screws that I can take out and then remove the magnets from. As you've seen, there's a top hole in there that I can actually take and use like an Allen wrench or something to push those out and recover those magnets if I ever need to use it in a different motor assembly as I don't plan on buying these every time I build another speaker. So... That'll kind of be implemented in all the designs moving forward. So we will move into the actual listening and then the graph testing. And then I'll talk to you a bit while the graph's on the screen. And yeah, I think we'll come back here for some closing up statements and yeah. So I'll... So just at first glance here, it looks as if this speaker performed better as it doesn't have as many peaks and valleys in the frequency responses. So it seems like it's delivering a flatter response. It looks like it kind of breaks up towards the high end of the speaker, which is, I guess, to be expected. Um, another thing I noticed is that on the amplifier, it took far less volume to actually get reasonable sound out of this so I believe that means that the sensitivity on the speaker has increased significantly so that's something that I need to look into figuring how to measure for some of the future videos but I think the speaker has been a success for testing a newer stronger motor okay so I don't know how well the actual audio will come through on the speaker testing as the testing that I did was done before I had this microphone set up. So in the future, hopefully I get some better audio quality for you guys as far as what the speaker is actually outputting. Um, but yeah, I believe this speaker is one of the best performing ones so far. And I, ha I think it has to do a lot with the actual magnetic density of this speaker. Like if if you put magnets down here, you can you can see that you don't have to get this very close at all and the magnetic field starts affecting the magnets. So this speaker is by far the highest magnetic field density speaker that I've built. Um, and I think I may be trying a different motor design on the next one utilizing some other N52 style magnets that I got when I purchased these. Um, other than that, though, I believe these magnets will be the ones used going forth until I decide I need to go bigger yet again. So, yeah, I'm hoping to have the next video up in four-ish weeks. Um, sometimes things come up and that can take up to five, but I usually shoot for four weeks. That seems to give me enough time to take care of all my stuff at work and take care of all of my school and just maintain things around the house um, 
do everything I need to do and do this on top of it. So, yeah. Um, so if you watched this far, thank you. Um, yeah. Have a good one, guys.